Hello everyone. Um, if you're wondering what is Gato GraphQL, I just launched it like one or two days ago. That's why you have never heard of it. And hopefully now you will have uh, a better idea of all the things that you can do with GraphQL. Maybe you know what, what GraphQL is. I don't want to go deep into the code. Uh, this is not a talk just for developers. It is for developers, but uh, my goal here is that everyone can use this tool. Um, so we, I'm going to demonstrate ex things that we can do with, with this plugin, basically. So what do you know that you can uh, use GraphQL for? You can use it as an API to fetch data, like the WPRS API. So basically, you have a WordPress site, and you expose your data using either the WPRS API or GraphQL, which is an alternative. And you can fetch the data uh, from the server. That allows you to build headless sites or to render the sites dynamically with client-server, uh, client-side rendering. So then that's how you build your uh, applications using Gatsby, uh, Next.js, React, or Vue. So this is the part that you might already know. If you're a developer building headless, you will use possibly GraphQL. That's what you know already. So what else can you use it for? That's it. So the, the way that we think of GraphQL is just as code to the get data from the server. But if you think about it, this idea of getting data from the server is dealing with data. And there are so many things that we can do with data, not just get data to render it with some client, right? I mean, we, we use data to do so many things in our servers. So now I'm going to introduce this new plugin. It's called gatographql.com. Sorry, the plugin is called gatographql. You can find it in gatographql.com. It's going to be available in the plugins directory quite soon. It's right now waiting for approval. But the download link on the website is already working. It's just downloading from the GitHub repo. And I am the author. So I'm going to show you how it looks like. And today I'm going to demonstrate. This is going to be a live demo. Things go wrong in live demos. So <laughs> if you haven't been patient with me, even Google gets it wrong. Nowadays, when they do them, okay. So, but I think everything will, will will go fine. So this is the plugin. Okay, let's start from the dashboard so you can see how it is. So there is this entry called Gato GraphQL. It has quite many options. When I click there, this is what you might have seen from GraphQL. This is the, called the graphical client. So you have here all the fields that you have on the schema, basically all the information that you have on your database. And here you compose a GraphQL query. You can provide variables, and then you execute the query, you get a response. Let, let's just do that. So here I'm querying for all the posts and the title for all of the posts. And then you can retrieve more information. Like you can say, OK, give me also the author. And it gives you all of this information. So the difference with the REST API is that the information is not predefined in advance. You can compose a query and fetch the data that you need, and you retrieve the data. So it is more efficient when you need to uh, gather so much data that you need to do several uh, round trip requests. You get all the posts, but you don't have the author information. Then you have to retrieve, the, you have to do another request to the server. With GraphQL, you don't have the problem. So for this kind of uh, interactions, it's much more uh, efficient. You have here the schema, which is basically all of the data that you can query, which is basically the database of WordPress. Uh, if we do some zoom, here you have the post, and it gives you all the connections that you have with all the other entities. They have the category, you have the author. You can explore. You basically have, this is, this has mapped the WordPress database into the what is called the GraphQL schema. So the idea is whatever you can access in WordPress, you can also access it through GraphQL. Now, what I'm showing you right now is the private schema. This is on, on the WP admin. GraphQL has something that is normally uh, the way to access information is through the single endpoint, which is public. So here, in, in this plugin, it has been decoupled. You have it. On one side is private, that, is access, uh, that you can access it as the admin of the site. And you can decide to also make it public through the, the uh, single endpoint which is not enabled by default. Because it's, the problem with GraphQL is that with great power comes great responsibility. All of this data that you can access, anyone can access it. So you don't want to publish an endpoint that anyone can query 
like unrestricted data. You want to restrict who can access. If you are the only user, you might not even want to have the, the public endpoint. So here, I will open this on a new tab to show you how it looks like. As you can see now, this screen is accessible on the internet. And now I can, I can also execute the queries. Pause. Same. OK. OK, and then we have the, the schema, similar. This is the public schema with all the information that you have. So the interesting thing here is that you can, the, the two schemas, the public schema and the private schema, are different. You can have control, you, ha you can have access to everything on the database on the admin and only limit to a few entities on the public uh, endpoint. So if you don't want to expose your users, that's private information and you need to expose that information, you can remove the user type from the public endpoint but still have it on the private endpoint. Okay, so a few more things. We have custom endpoints. I'm first running you through all of the things that you can do here which are different to what you might expect from uh, GraphQL. You can create many endpoints. So maybe you want to have an endpoint for one specific client. You create an endpoint just for this person and you can restrict it by IP. Okay, only the person from this IP can access in this endpoint. Or you can say only the admin or the editor or the contributor or the author uh, role can access the endpoint. You can, you can have restrictions. And the other thing that we have here that is quite interesting is persistent queries, which is basically a GraphQL query that you can store on the server. I'll show you one. And this is basically REST. I'm going to show you this one. So here, this is how it is. It's a CPT, it's a custom post type. And what you do is you store the query that you want to execute. And then you can execute this as a typical custom post type. When you call the URL, it gives you the data that you want. So basically what you can do then is you come to this interface, you call the GraphQL query, you publish it, and this gives you a new URL that you can fetch that data. So this is REST. In other, in other, in other words, what you can do is use GraphQL to publish REST endpoints. And this is also, even though this is predefined, you can pass um, parameters. So here if I say limit equals three, now I have more, more data. And this is, once again, provided via GraphQL. So you can, you can say which are the parameters that, that you accept. Okay, so this is what we have. Uh, these are all the, several of the different screens that we have on, on the plugin how you can actually access the information. Now what I will show you is what things we can do here because once again, my, my goal is to say GraphQL as you know it is too little. It's just the tip of the iceberg. To access data to render your client, uh, your, your site on the client is just one of the things that you can do. There are so many more things that we can actually do. So um, what I have done while coding this plugin is to satisfy many of my own needs and I basically, what I did was to code the resolvers on PHP that will actually satisfy that functionality. And now it is available. And I'm going to demonstrate use cases. So from now on, I'm not a developer anymore. I'm just a user. And for this, on the plugin, there is a section called recipes. And here, I think like 34 to date, which are things that you can do with uh, GraphQL, which are basically admin tasks things that we do uh, maybe on, on an everyday uh, basis. Um, you can search for data, you can use it with WPCLI, use it with Gutenberg. So now I'm going to walk you through all of these many use cases. Now I have only uh, something like 15 minutes left and I have 15 recipes. I don't promise that I will be able to actually show you all of them, uh, so let's start. So the first one, search data, I have here. So the interesting thing here is that um, you can search data in WordPress, but it's limited, it's very restricted to what things you can actually do. So with this you have more possibilities. I copy this query from the recipe and I go to the graph graphical client, I paste it, and I run it. So in this case, whoop, I copied it wrong. So here what I'm doing is I'm querying for all the posts which have a thumbnail, like a meta key thumbnail, and then I, re uh, and I retrieve the feature image for those. 
and then all the ones which do not have a thumbnail. So this is granular control. If you need to find out which are the posts that don't have a feature image yet, so you can upload one feature image, you can run this query and then you find out and then you, you continue working with this. Or Or here, for instance, I'm going to run a regular expression to find metadata. So in this case, it's searching for the meta uh, locale with es underscore and then any, any two digits. So basically, this is all the speakers of Spanish language, es, ar, es, es. So this is a, a, a regex that I'm running. OK. And and then something else that we can do here is you can query dynamic data, which means that the, that the input to the query comes as an output from the same query. So this query, we have time, is a field that returns the time right now. And then we have this other field called uh, int substract that given this field that we just queried, it will subtract one day from it. Now I can create a new date, taking that input, and I input that into yet another field. You can concatenate. This is basically you have a function that you get a field, you get an input, and then you get a response, and then you input that into another function, and so on and so forth. In one query, I'm, I'm executing three or four operations. And at the end, I have all the comments that were added in the last 24 hours. Uh, there are zero, but uh, now there are a bit more. And this is all dynamic. So the, in the same query, you can, you can, you can code uh, logic in the query. So then you don't need to do this in the client. Why is that useful? Because for instance, if you have a mobile app, uh, you might need to duplicate that logic. So you have your website, and you fetch data from the website, and you have a mobile app, and you fetch data from the mobile app. You need to have logic in both applications to do this operation, whatever it is. Now you don't need to do that anymore. You can put that logic in the GraphQL query, which is your single source of truth, and everything is already done for you. Oh, so com complement WPCLI. So this tool allows you to do many of the things that you can do with WPCLI, but the idea is not to replace WPCLI. The idea is to complement it. Um, so as we saw just now, it's it's good to fetch data because it gives you all these many options. It's very granular. So then you can, you can execute a, a command that gets the data from GraphQL and then inputs that into WPCLI. So just now, we saw this query to fetch data with a regular expression. You can execute this on the terminal Actually, maybe I can show you. I think I have it. OK, so I run this on the terminal. And if I see the response to this query, so this is the data that I just got. So from this data, I can extract, in this case, a Spanish locale user ID. which is number three, that's the ID that I just queried from the GraphQL query. And so this information now, I can execute a WPCLI uh, operation that takes this data and does something with it. Update the user. Okay, this is one of my favorite ones. You can, you, can, you can query the users, and you can fetch data from them, your email, your name, your attribute, whatever it is from your meta and then compose an email just for this person and then send the email. And you're composing the email on the same query that you're doing all of this logic. So in this query, I have a mutation. And I fetch all the users. And for each of them, I get the email, the display name. And I have a meta entry called credits. And then I can compose a message using markdown. 
and I input these values that I, that I just collected into the message. And then I just send the email. So if I run this, and I go here to, I can see that different users get different emails. In the case of this one blogger, it was a hello blogger Davenport, you have no credits remaining. And this other person will get hello subscriber Bennett. And so you can actually, in one single query, have all the logic that you need to personalize the data for different users. And, and I find this just so cool. Because if you buy one plugin to send personalized messages to different users, maybe it's not easy to customize. To have, you need to have all of the options in a drop down. And if you don't have that specific option, that field that you need, then you're in trouble. Or you need to deploy some PHP code or something like that. But this, you can query that in the same query you executed, and you're ready to go. So all of these things, whatever everything I'm showing you right now, what it has is common is data. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever you want to do with data, you can do it here. Um, this one, I think we have no time. But basically, the idea is you have the query. You can execute it from the front end to retrieve to power your Gutenberg block. Or you can do it from the back end to render the dynamic code. So with one single query, you can, you can actually uh, power both functionalities. Uh, we have this integration with Gutenberg. So you can render the data on the client using React. OK, we can, let's do this one, duplicate the blog post. So I copy the query. I paste it. So what this query does is it fetches a post. I have to provide the ID via a variable. And then it exports the data. And then it gets the data again in a mutation, and it creates the post. So let's see if I have the ID. Post. If I run this, so it will have duplicated the, the post. And the cool thing with this, I can actually show you. Here it is. So it has duplicated. So the cool thing with this is that, once again, this is a query that you can personalize. You can customize for whatever need you want. So here I will export the tile, and I can modify the tile before I add it again into the duplicated post. Yeah, right there, just in case, this one. So if I come here, now I have it with a copy. So this is, this is the power. It's just a query. Uh, you can customize content for different users. This one we will skip. You can adapt content in bulk. So if you have a site migration, you have the migrated the domain, you have all domain.com, and now you have new domain.com. Basically, what you can do is, is a search and replace on all the posts on the site. In let's let's do this one. So here, let's see this query. This query will take a variable replace from and a replace to. It gets all the posts. In this case, I'm limiting them just to five. And it fetches the title and the excerpt. You can also fetch the content. You can fetch metadata. And then it will do a replace of this from to two to this replace to in, or in these two fields. And then it will export this data. And then I have a mutation that will take the data again here. And then it will do an update with the new information. So let's see. Uh, translate from, hello, replace to, by, whatever. So I will execute first this. Well, 
well, there is. So basically, this one was hello world, and now it will be replacing that string in, in all of the different posts at the same time. So in one operation, you can do a mass migration of content. OK, we are running out of time, so I'm going to show you oh, automation. You can automate tasks. Basically, all of these are queries that you can then, like the persistent query, for instance, is a slug. You can then execute a hook calling the this slug. So basically, you can say whenever there is a new post, which is the WP insert post hook, execute this slug. Like you have an internal server, and you can execute that, that GraphQL query. So basically, you can send a notification. Or you can insert a Gutenberg block that is mandatory. You create a new post, and if this block is not there, it will insert it automatically. Or you can do anything you, you might think of. But the one that I want to show you before we wrap up is to translate the blog post, because this one is quite, uh, quite useful, I think. So let's say here in the post, I have this, uh, this blog post, which is a lot of blogs on different styles, headline and paragraph, images with captions, and you have the bullets. You have a caption, a cover, and then the text on top of the cover. You have, this is a, a block inside of a block. You have buttons, you have videos with a caption, and you have tables. Now, I'm going to translate all of this. This is a rather long query. I copy this. OK, so I'm going to translate this to French, it seems. Hmm? What am I doing? Oh, I did this again. Translate post. Post ID. Now it's running and it's calling Google Translate. And when I refresh the page, all the content inside has been translated. So you have, this is not translating the HTML of the blog post, but it's translating the properties inside of the, of the blocks. So then everything remains on the same place. And if you can see, even a block inside of a block inside of a block have been translated. The properties have been translated the table have been translated. So you can actually go all the way down, pinpoint the property that you do, that you want to modify, translate it, or extract it, or do something with it, and store the blog post again on the, on the, on the site. So you can send a notification, you can send daily activity. You can combine data, you can fetch data from another server. You can import a post from another site or you can distribute content to multiple sites. So, yeah. Conclusion, GraphQL is a powerful and ver versatile tool for interacting with data in WordPress. So yeah, basically the idea is if there's any data that you need to modify, you can do it with GraphQL. All right, thank you. This is really not a technical question, but I was wondering what prompted you to create this plugin? Was th are, I mean, were there any problems that you would uh, constantly encounter yourself as the developer, and so you decided to create this uh, plugin? Yeah, uh, yeah. One of the problems is to have to rely on on different plugins for things which are very similar. So if you want to duplicate the blog post, you there's this plugin for doing that. If you want to customize content for sending emails, you have to use that other plugin. Uh, so the idea is, all of these are very similar tasks, and I knew that you can just use GraphQL to solve all of them, pretty much. And that you can customize it for whatever need you have. So because that was the, the other thing that was a bit frustrating, when you need to access some property that it was not available on the plugin that I was using, and that was, yeah, that was frustrating. So this, in a way, like, this is like a tool that you can use to input your query for whatever need you have uh, and, and it solves basically it yeah it merges all of these plugins. Yeah. Thank
Any more questions? Uh, is it possible if you develop it using uh, REST API? For example, Gato REST API is that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because it, it defeats the purpose. Because the REST API, the idea is that the data is, is defined in advance. It is the, the, the how it is structured, that you access the endpoint and the data is already there on the server. So this, the idea with GraphQL is that you can compose the query. It's basically, GraphQL gives you the flexibility. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, this is not exactly a question, but can we see the part where we can see the tables with all the relationship? Um, oh, kind of interested in that. So can you, uh, is it possible to, let's say, drag and drop those kind of tables? You mean this? Is it possible what, again? You want to? Maybe, maybe you want to explain what this table is about. What, what is, what what is this about? Yeah. So these are all the entities that you have on the database. So you have, in this case, this is a page. You have a user. You have a, uh, well, this is a plugin, an event that I have. Uh, a custom post, a comment. And then inside of this table, you have the properties that every one of, every of these entities have. So in the case of a comment, you have, if it is approved, the author, author email, author IP, author name, and so on. And then you have the relationships with all the other entities. So the comment has an author, which is of, of the type user. So that when you follow that relationship, it goes to the user type. And then you have all of the fields, all of the properties of the user. So when before I was composing the GraphQL query that I was saying post, tile, author, and then for the author, author of the name, it's basically this. You're stepping on the initial uh, node, which is the root. And you can traverse the, this schema. This is called the schema, the GraphQL schema. So you're traves, traversing this, all of the entities field by field. So when you say, give me all the posts, you're basically stepping on the post entity. And then you are in the post, and you can say, give me the title, which is an I property, and give me the author. So then being in the post entity, you translate yourself towards the user entity. Basically, this is the WordPress database, but, but mapped as GraphQL. Uh, so is the mapping automated, or do we have to do manual mapping? Um, it's manual and automated as much as possible. So if, if something is data that you can actually extract from the database and create the schema automatically, yeah, like a post type, for instance. Maybe if the post type is registered, then the post types will appear here automatically. But if you have a plugin that has a custom post type and is very specific, you might need, you will need to add it manually. And then you also need to create the fields and the resolvers for the fields. So basically when in GraphQL you have a query and you run the query, it's calling PHP code on, on your plugin that is ex executing some operation. That has to be coded. Yeah. Okay, Nathan, Nathan, you're here in the hall. Hi, Nathan. Me. Yeah. Remember this morning you did yeah. something on REST, so yes. mm. maybe yeah. it's an interesting point that we can change that to GraphQL instead. Yeah. You want to say something about that? <laughs> so I, ju I just combined two speakers. Now, why don't you guys go back on stage and talk and do another talk? How's that? I was reading his website documentation. I was like, yeah, yeah, trying to look it. Go on stage, man. Do we have more time? Are you sure? All right, so, okay, maybe I'll go to the front. Okay, uh, where should I stand? I'll stand over there. Yeah. So that it doesn't look awkward. Okay, so I'm just wondering, because I think you watched my presentation, right? Yeah. You know the last one whereby the AI assistant one? Yeah. I mean, personally, I think that one is the most interesting like, if let's say you can communicate a website through an AI. And then because after all, I was using the REST API and then I look at this, I was like, 
okay, maybe I can do something like this as well. Yeah. So do you think that that will be the possibility? Because yeah. you mentioned that one of the things that you mentioned whereby you can update the admin data, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. like, okay, yeah. that's the thing I want, I'm interested in. Yeah, actually, uh, in your presentation, you finished with webhooks. Oh, okay. This is, this is basically a persistent query. It's a URL. You compose it, and then you can, you, can, you can have data coming in and data going out, because also you can yep. interact. Yep. So then you can publish a webhook, or you can receive webhooks and process everything, so yep. you, and without PHP code. Okay, that would be very interesting. Yeah. By the way, um, just maybe a little promo here. Uh, if anyone attending Bootcamp Asia, I'm submitting a topic related to WordPress AI Assistant, specifically for the WordCamp Asia next year. So hopefully it can be approved. Then I may manage to share something that I found with your plugin in next WordCamp Asia, if it's possible. <laughs>